Hey shooters, welcome back to the Shooters Resource Channel. Today we're gonna to be comparing two uh, firearms that are one in the same. One is my eight inch SBR 300 blackout, and another is my 14.5 300 blackout upper that I recently did a video on. We wanna go over which one might be right for you. Is, is it worth SBRing a 300 blackout just due to all the uncertainty around regulations and whether or not pistol braces are gonna be legal in the future? Whether or not they're legal now, it's really confusing. So if you want that short package, is it worth SBRing? Or should you just go with a pinned and welded 14.5 300 blackout? Uh, some of the benefits to 300 blackout that I enjoy is being able to shoot a lot quieter here on my home range. Also for home defense and close quarter combat. So let's look at the two side by side and see which one might be the best option for you. If you haven't already shooters, go ahead and take a second. Hit that like and subscribe button, support the channel. All right shooters, first up, we're gonna be shooting the eight and a half inch SBR 300 blackout. Let's see how this bad boy runs. We're gonna start out with running a, a timer and we're going to go ahead and put five shots on target and just see how easy it is to get up that smaller barrel, put five shots on target. Is there any difference between this gun and the 14.5? All right, shooters, it looks like we did that in 2.29 seconds. I was not warmed up at all. This was just coming out and uh, shooting the gun, not getting warmed up. So it looks like we got uh, two in the zero zone, two in the down one zone, and one right there. Well, really three in the down one zone. This was uh, really close right there on the edge. So not the best group. We're right here at 15 yards, uh, just drawing from low ready. Let's try that again. Let's uh, first see if the 14.5, because I swapped my optic over, if the optic is close enough on target. All right, so I just put a hit on target on an eight inch circle right here at 15 yards. Pretty easy. It was in 1.3 seconds, so not too bad. Let's see if we can put five on target and see how we do. All right, let's see how we did. Again, didn't take time to warm up on the first group. Not shooting super accurate. I just wanna get five on target fast. So it looks like we did, we had three outside the zero zone before. Looks like we did very similar. Two in the zero zone, a couple outside. So one, let's see, so yeah. Not real sure, but essentially three outside the zero zone, two in the zero zone. Same as last time. And forgot to grab the timer. Let's see how long that took. All right, 2.14 seconds. So a little faster. I'm gonna say they're identical. Obviously, uh, part of it is warming up. I mean, with the same lower, same setup, this one's just a little bit longer. I wouldn't expect any real difference in performance other than Maybe accuracy, uh, both are short length gas systems, so reliability is gonna be very similar. I'm gonna guess that the, the major difference here is twofold. One, whether or not you want a tack stamp or uh, you wanna go with a pistol brace or two, uh, you know, whether or not you want the added velocity with the longer barrel if you're going with supersonic ammo. I also like the 14 and a half because it allows me to train with a very similar setup to my 556 setup in my backyard with a uh, lot less noise than shooting supersonic ammo, even with my uh, surefire suppressor that I've got on my 556 setup. So it's just kind of up to you. I'm going to keep this 14 and a half inch upper because I really think that uh, it's really good for training to practice similar to what I'm going to be running with my 5.56 setups. 
and also I could use this setup uh, maybe for a hunting application if I want to put a different scope on it and go with supersonics. All right, next up we're going to slice the pie with the two different rifles. Uh, obviously in shorter, tighter spaces, the uh, smaller barrel and shorter setup might have an advantage. However, it's important to know that when you are coming around and clearing rooms from the outside, that you want to stay as far off the wall as physically possible. This allows you to see inside and also you're not giving yourself away as you're coming around the corner. Now we're restricting it to a much narrower space, about as wide as an average hallway. So let's see how the shorter gun versus the longer 14 5 inch barrel compare to each other. Notice, keeping this distance, that this rifle is too long to turn completely sideways. So I'm going to take it off of my shoulder, come above it, and see how that works. So a big difference between the longer and shorter barrel. Uh, I didn't physically have two walls, but just using this barrel as a restriction point made it a lot more difficult with the slightly longer barrel. Now the eight inch barrel with the suppressor wasn't easy either. So, you know, in that case, maybe taking the suppressor off would be easier. Let's try that real quick. Now, of course, uh, my gun didn't pick up the next round because it doesn't have the suppressor on it. So it just points to some reliability issues to be uh, aware of when you go to a suppressed firearm. You've got to play around with adjustable gas blocks a lot of time. I mean, there's suppressors out there that are supposed to help with that. But uh, I've got the Silencer Co. Chimera, and I had to get the adjustable gas block to get reliability out of the feed. It's 100% reliable with the suppressor on there. But just taking the suppressor off with the same rounds, it failed to pick up uh, the next round. So not, in, not as much back pressure because that's what the suppressor does. The suppressor adds a lot of back pressure. So I also had to do a few extra things to the gun besides putting the adjustable gas block on. One is uh, I went with some silicone right there on the charging handle to make it kind of a gas buster charging handle. And that high temp silicone has helped out quite a bit. And uh, so I would recommend that as well. It keeps a lot of the gases out of my face when I'm running suppressed. But just something to consider because if I run supersonics through here too, it might need a different gas setting. So uh, there's other options out there. There are, uh, you know, gas piston systems that might help you with these problems. But uh, just want you guys to be aware when you're running an adjustable gas block, when you're running suppressed, there are a few things to consider. Uh, another one is with your scopes, point of aim, point of impact shifts. Uh, sometimes with certain suppressors, you can be off several inches at 100 yards, even at 50 yards, whether you're shooting suppressed or unsuppressed. So things to consider when you're looking at getting suppressors. All right, shooters, next up, I'm going to just drill entering a room after I've cleared it and we're gonna do a, a button hook right here to the side. So we'll see how that goes with both options. So next up, we've got the accuracy portion. Uh, I've got the 8-inch Wilson Combat match grade barrel here on the shorter setup, and I've got a 14.5 Ballistic Advantage match grade barrel on the longer setup. Let's see, I mean, this isn't 
a bench rest weapon system by any means. So I'm just gonna be shooting off fence at 40 yards. And let's see if we see any major difference in group size. Again, I really consider this kind of a hundred yard and in setup. So let's see how it does. All right, that first group was with the 14 and a half inch barrel. See, it did all right, 40 yards, probably a three inch group. Let's see how the eight inch barrel compares. And so this is with the eight inch barrel. And of course the eight inch barrel is sided in. So I've got one, one, two, three, four, and I dropped one. So not bad. Uh, group size is very similar. Not the best ammunition for match grade accuracy. This is a uh, Hornady's uh, expanding subsonic ammunition. So looking at the two barrels, I'm going to expect about the same amount of accuracy. You can do a lot of research. Typically, barrel length does not change the amount of accuracy that you get out of a rifle platform. Well, shooters, I hope you learned a lot today from this video. I hope that you uh, it helps you make a buying decision. If you're considering a 300 blackout, maybe you want to go with the shortest barrel possible. You might have to SBR that, or maybe you're looking to go with the brace option if that remains legal long-term, or maybe you're looking to uh, go with a pinned and welded or a you know 14.5 or a 16 inch barrel, and then you don't have to worry about it. For me, I've got both. So I've got that shortest option without uh, SBRing it, which is the 14.5 pinned and welded option. And I've got a video on that a rifle setup that goes in a little more detail as why I think it's one of the better platforms out there for 300 blackout but i've also got the eight inch barrel for any time i want to go with a shorter solution uh, it does lighten the gun up a little bit it makes it about the same length as a standard m4 without a suppressor when you put my uh, chimera silencer co suppressor on it so great setup really fun to shoot uh, but i did sbr it because i'm not real sure what the pistol brace laws are going to look like long term so I wanted to have a dedicated setup for that shorter platform. All in all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you all and God bless.